man. We back, man. I can't do the. It's episode 13. I can't do the Sesame Street. Man, I, I, I know it was mentally taxing on you to count oh, to yeah. 12. So I don't know how to get to 13. We're on episode 13, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, I told you, man, I learned, I learned to count from Sesame Street, so I, I can't get to 13. Hey, you might have snapped, man. I don't know if I can get to 13. <laughs> hey, you might have snapped. But look. Hey, you you got to set your live up, man. Man, I, I wasn't going to do it for oh, okay, this particular episode, right, man. Bit, bit, so I wasn't right. going to do it for this. Because, uh, you know, the uh, you can only, for your post to do uh, oh, yeah, yeah, a certain yeah, amount yeah, of numbers, you got yeah. you to spread sense. out the hours. You know what I mean? Got so, so I wasn't going to. It hasn't even been three hours since the. The, the sugar and the grits post, but I went okay, ahead and put the last live up. Right, but anyway, this whole episode, this is what I want to do for this entire episode. What? I want, I want us, I want us to zoop, zoop, as Fort Knox would do. Shout out to Fort Knox. We always shout out Fort Sorry, Knox, hey, man. man. Fort Knox, man. man he's a good Atlanta legend. <laughs> yes, man. He's such a good guy, man. You know, Fort Knox would do that rewind and go zoop, 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 and he would do that every time, man. <laughs> but anyway, I, I want, I want us to go back for this entire episode. Mm -hmm. Um, to, to different events, right? Uh -huh. Blast from the past. The first thing that I want to bring up, right? In the past. Okay. And hopefully, this stays in the past. But, you know, franchises make mistakes. So I'm sure in the future, we'll be able to talk about okay. something that happens from this point on. But anyway. I'm curious. You tell me. Okay. In your opinion, who was the worst draft pick for defensive end for the Atlanta Falcons. Who was the worst defensive end or free agent pickup the Atlanta Falcons ever made? Okay. All right. All right. Let, let me go with this. All right. So, defensive end, me personally, and I'm going to say why, a lot of people probably aren't going to agree with me. It has to be hands down Andre Bruce. Andre Bruce. He was the number one overall pick for the Atlanta Falcons. Number one. He was supposed to be the Lawrence Taylor to the Falcons. Ooh. That's what they were saying. Out of Auburn. He about 6'5", big, stout dude, killing it. He, he said a little joke. He's like, well, I never got a chance to tackle Bo, Bo Jackson because he never practiced. <laughs> you know, they played on the same team. Mm -hmm. So he kind of took a shot. Mm -hmm. Man, this dude... This dude, all I remember about Andre Bruce is he ordered some pizza from a delivery service. I'm not, I don't remember which company, mm -hmm. but he had a pellet gun and robbed the pizza man and took the pizza. Why, while he was in Atlanta, while he was in Atlanta Falcons, this On man robbed a pizza man while he's an NFL player. A player getting paid, number one pick salary. Tell, tell me what he did, man. Tell me what. He all right, did. you know what? I think you should be like, what was he thinking? I, I don't. I don't I know what he was thinking. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you what happened, and I want you to. Do I don't the know. Work. For some reason, all I think about is a big, hungry dude sitting there saying, "You gonna eat that cornbread, boss?" <laughs> hey, that's about how he talked too. I ain't gonna lie. And then he just pulled a gun on the piece of man. But, but where was his? Where was his money? Um, bro, he had money. It was at. It was at his spot. The piece of man. Did he had money. Yeah, man, he just signed a contract. It's his first year. We know he was supposed to have money. So you think he blew through his money? I mean, I don't know what he did. He couldn't get. He couldn't afford he it. Didn't, he didn't have a cash. I'm, I'm I, not taking up for the man. Hey, but they were back in the late '80s, early '90s. Man, you think he didn't have a ten dollar pizza for pizza? I don't know what the man had. So he pulled. So the pizza man come in, pull out the pellet gun. I mean, <laughs> lay that pizza right down the table. Run, get oh, the hell on. I, I don't know if he ran, ran his pockets now. They ain't say that. <laughs> so. So, a lot of people don't know this. You're telling me and the Atlanta fans that we drafted a defense no, number one overall. Number right? one overall. Not, not just the Falcons' first round pick. Number one. The number one. And, and me reading the article, I think it was in his third year. Oh, with third the Falcons. year. Okay, there you go. I think it was in his third year. This man robs a piece of man. So, you, so you, you a franchise owner. Yes. And your one of your players who's supposed to help take your franchise to the next level, yeah, robs a pizza man. Yes, for for a piece of that, and this what nineteen ninety whatever er, early nineties, right? Yeah, pizza probably cost about five, maybe 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 twelve dollars. No more for two larges. He probably got three larges. Maybe maybe and, and delivery. Free. I'm trying to <laughs> tell you, man. Okay, let, let's just say fifteen. <coughs> For fifteen dollars, this looked, man probably had two larges and a tip. It probably could have got him the piece. It probably was um, pizza, pizza. Oh man, man, this man. Yeah. So that has to be the dumbest thing that I've ever heard of. Yeah. 
somebody robbing an NFL player robbing. Yeah. I mean, it's it's stupid. Period. For yeah. people to like, cause, but that, that used to be one of the one of the the foolish things that people would do. They would call a pizza man, and they come and they would rob them. And that, that's why nowadays, uh, I don't I don't know if they still do cash or whatever, but I know they tried to go to a lot of just go ahead and pay online. They mm -hmm. keep them from getting mm -hmm. robbed. But this man is an NFL player making money. I don't care if the man was only making $100,000 a year, and he decides to throw that career away mm -hmm. to rob somebody. Yes. I don't know what he was thinking, but that, that's why I say he's one of the worst picks. Uh, I'll go through about three more that I can think of. Well, well you, you got to let me step in and, and, and throw one out. You done threw Andre Bruce out. All right, well, go ahead. Let me go. I'm, I'm going to tell you. I already know who you're going to say. I'm going to tell you, man. I, I dislike this guy. One, because he was sorry. Right, one because he went, when I went through his stats, this dude was like he he was getting his college uh, sacks off of teams like let, let's just say a team like Furman and and, and schools of that nature, smaller. So, so was he a top ten pick? Yes, oh, I know yes, who this is. yeah, top ten pick. And I'm gonna tell you what, what I'm gonna tell you what really made me mad because I'm, I'm gonna paint the scene for you. I'm watching the draft. The year is 2007. 2007. Michael Vick. Is they just found all kind of stuff at his house. We don't know if Vic gonna get in trouble or not, but we're still trying to see the team building. Okay. We go into the draft. It's a player that had torn college football up that past season. I'm talking about he took college football by storm the last two, three years. Okay. So he doesn't get drafted number one, two, three, four, five, or six. Oh, I, I forget what we drafted, but one pick before us. One pick before the Falcons. The Minnesota Vikings come up, right? Who they get? The Minnesota Vikings had just brought in a running back, I think, from the Chicago Bears to join their team. Paid him good money in free agency. Right. So I'm like, I called my partner, Jill. Hey, man, we going to be able to get none other than Adrian Peterson. I remember that. We about to draft Adrian Peterson because Minnesota, Minnesota just brought in a free agent running back. Yeah. They not gonna draft Adrian Peterson. Oh. Boy, we about to have Vic. And Adrian Peterson. We about to have Adrian Peterson and Norwood. What? Oof, that been so what? Nasty. You telling me we about to have Jerry's Norwood and Adrian Peterson and Vic? Oof. I'm going crazy in the house when the Vikings come. So up. who do we get? The Vikings draft Adrian Peterson. All right. The next draft, we go defensive end. And draft Jamal. I couldn't sack a quarterback if they laid down and asked me to just touch him. Hmm. Anderson. I think he had like a total of five sacks all his career. That man is trash. Hey, real quick, I don't remember what he did. Trash. In what? He, what? He, he was killing. College. So the man had one year where he had like ten sacks, but like I told you, I looked up his oh. sacks. He was. He had a bunch of sacks against small schools. Hmm. Say like. Seven or eight sacks against small schools and like two or three against schools that, so that he were, had like one game. He came from what, Arkansas, yes, right? Yeah, so he had one game where he set four, hit four sacks off a start line. Uh, against a small oh, school. Wow. And that beefed his stats up. Jamal Anderson. We're not they, talking about a running back. Man, no, 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 shout, man. Shout out to Jam. We're not talking about Jam. Yeah. You know, we're talking about sorry defensive yeah. end Jamal Anderson. So, so, so when, when I was thinking, when I was thinking of the, 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 you know, when I picked Andre Bruce, Jamal Anderson really was like the one I was going to say, but Andre Bruce pissed me off. I mean, dog, this pick. dude put, yeah. no, 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 this dude tried to rob somebody. Yeah. This dude, that, that, yeah. that's the worst to yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that hands yeah. down. With a, with a pellet gun. That, that's, that's the worst. Pete, to me. It, it wasn't even like, he didn't go to no bank <laughs> on no jewelry store. Hey, well, let, let, let's keep going right, down the go, line. Let's go. Let's, go. let's keep, oh, who, I, who else would you, all right, you no, I'm, I'm going by number one picks. I would say um, the next one, one. Would be Perry Jerry. Perry Jerry. Okay, so we talking defense line, or just DN, because Perry Jerry was a D tackle. I, I'm talking defensive line, but I, okay. I go with that. Um, um, Vic Beasley, he had that good year. Hey man, I can't, I, I can't throw Vic in the bus. He helped us get to. He, 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 he was a bust, man, because he was, he was, he was drafted high, top ten pick. He was supposed to be, supposed to still be playing. To be honest with you. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. He got us to. He was a big reason we got to the Super Bowl. He had a good year, so I give him that. So th that's why he's not number one. But just for the like, I, he just fell off. He fell off fast and hard. He did. Yeah, I don't understand. It. And then the other one is. I know I, what you're about to say. Yeah, Tack McKinley, man. Like he really let me down. 
You really let me down. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to get to the quarterback. Find me later. My grandma. My find, grandma. Find me later, man. My grandma. Find really, me later. I really thought. I really thought he was gonna do his thing. We should have known then the dude had some kind of mental issues. Yeah, he had a he had a thing a, a chain of his grandma. Well, no, no, he, he just had a, he had he had a, a picture frame. Yeah, he, he didn't have a chain. Yeah, he, he just had he came out oh, with a picture frame okay. in his hands. Yeah, so I, I can't I can't hate on that because I definitely understand, but. But the, I, I, what I'm mad but is the theatrics. Like, the theatrics. Okay, cool. But the reason I'm really mad is a couple picks down, and we traded up to get him too. So we lost. We they, lost they some did. assets. But we could have had who? The slickster got him. The slickster got him. <laughs> Thomas Demetrio. Mm -hmm. So who could, <clears throat> could who could we have gotten in that? T.J. Watt. That's who I was going with. T.J. Watt. Mickey Ficky Watts, man. T.J. Watt. We could have got him without trading any assets. And he's still playing, doing his thing. Still dominate. Dominating. But <clears throat> they chose to go. Tack. Tack McKinley. Is Tack still playing? Man, Tack used to be online tweeting and putting on Instagram that, man, man, I'm, man, I'm so dry in this city. Man, <laughs> that dude would put up posts about, man, I'm so dry in this city. What that mean? Man, he ain't got no drugs? He, he, that, no, he, he, he no it, it, it no, ain't getting no, wet no for cat, him. No cat? He, ain't got, he, he don't got no female to make it wet for him. And so when you're, I went, when, when, lying, bro. man, I promise you, Pat used to be on <laughs> IG uh, all the time, posting about it's so dry in this city. And and I'm, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell you, when when I knew, Tat just didn't have a pulse of what the city is about mm -hmm. and of what he should mean to the city as a Falcons player. When Georgia lost to Alabama, when that man, when that man got on there and posted about. Georgia losing to Alabama tomorrow. Man, this city has the worst look. I was like, because remember, we drafted him the year after 28 to 3. Oh. We drafted him the next season. Oh. So 28 to 3 happened in February. Yeah. Tack got drafted in April yeah. or beginning of May. When that doing so, the Georgia thing happened a year later. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. So a year later, the Georgia Alabama thing happened. Yeah. This dude tweets that day. Now, I get it. He went to UCLA. That's when Tua came in through touchdowns. Yes. All right. I get it. The man um, went to UCLA. Right. Yeah. He doesn't have any allegiance yeah, yeah. to the University yeah, of Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But as a Falcon, knowing what some of the Falcons fans are Georgia fans, yeah. knowing what they went through, just keep that to yourself. You don't, you don't have to put that online. Like, laugh about it with your boys. Like, and we ain't tripping. But you don't have to put that online. As a, like, that's when I knew. I said, you know what? This dude right here is lost. Yeah. <clears throat> that dude is lost. And yeah. then he put up by how he was dry. Tack McKinley, uh, to me, it goes... And, I'm with you. It has to go Andre Bruce All right. because he was just stupid. All right. Has to go Jamal Anderson. All right. Has to go Tack McKinley. All right. Perea Jerry looked promising. He busted his knee up oh, in his second. Okay. No, all right, all right, all right. And, 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 and like, right. what was it? I think it was his second year. I okay. think it was his second okay. year. Okay, okay, there we go. He was, he was coming in. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was, uh, man, who was it against? Was it against the Packers? Damn. I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. What, but I can't remember. But he tore, he tore his knee up. Oh, wow. And, 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 and he tried to come back, but then he, he just retired. Yeah. And so we can look at it as a bust from that okay, standpoint. I, I didn't know he got But yeah. I got to get a man respect that the man must have felt like either one, I'm not up for this. Two, I don't got it. Yeah. You know, but but at least he went up there talking about, find me later. Find me later. Man, find me later. I'm here to get to the quarterback. Get to the quarterback. Man, Tack was a bust. Tack is number three, right after Jamal Anderson. All right. And I personally don't put Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley. That's just me. Uh -huh. I don't put him in the bus cat. I put him in the unfortunate he didn't. Ben give us Pan more category. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he remember, gave us a good year where he let the team. Remember, stand. Vic Beasley, a lot of people, I mean, hey, please comment, tell me if I'm wrong. In that playoff run, Vic Beasley, Deion Jones, and, De and Devondre Campbell were a big reason Russell Wilson couldn't scramble on us and Aaron Rodgers couldn't scramble yeah. in those games. Oh, wow. Uh, if you go back and look, yeah. it's a few times that Aaron Rodgers wanted to try to go for 10 yards and Vic Beasley or Deion Jones were right there on his behind. It, uh, another defensive end didn't have the speed. You know what? You know what? I'm so gonna, he I'm helped. I'm going to get Vic Beasley because I remember he did have some back issues. So maybe, he, maybe his career got cut down through injury and he didn't ever let on. Because I remember one year – his back was really messed up, and he was playing out there. So, I, so man, I, I want I want to bring up one one play that Vic Vic almost made a play mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. 
Oh. Vic gets in the backfield. Okay. Hits Tom Brady's arm. The pass goes up real quite crazy. Martellus Bennett, who was playing for the Patriots, the tight end comes out of nowhere. It was it was about to be intercepted by, I think, Ricardo Allen or one of the cornerbacks. Okay, okay. But Mar- Martellus Bennett comes out of nowhere, catches this crazy-looking pass because Vic Beasley hit Tom Brady's arm, catches the ball, and runs for a first down. So Vic almost made a play. He he, he almost made a play. Uh, win the Super Bowl. But Martell has been. Now I don't know if that would have been to win it, but that's when we were up. That's when the Patriots were trying to come back. Uh, that would have been another play that would have helped us in the game. Yeah. And, and the Patriots were in their own side of the field. Oh, wow. So we would have gotten the ball like within the 30 or 20 yard oh, line. Wow. All right. Crazy play. Yes. All right. We got to give it up. All right, Beasley. All right. You want to. Nah, sorry. Now, if you think he is, nah, it's, it's nah, okay. Nah, nah, I just. He's a first round with a lot of potential. I was expecting more great things out of him. Man, Vic, Vic did stay long enough to get that money, though. Yeah, he got the Vic, Vic played with their emotions until he got that payday. <laughs> Vic, Vic got that fifth-year option. Dan Quinn put his career on the line. Now, I will say, Vic, you wrong for that. You wrong for that. From a standpoint of for the team, yeah. for getting that money, get your money, young nigga. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. But from a team standpoint and yeah. as a fan, Dan Quinn put put his, his name on the line. Yeah, he did. They gave him that fifth year option. I want to say ten mil, eleven mil, mm. something like that. May may have been more. Got and Vic there. Vic wasn't there anymore after that. Vic Vic moved on, doing whatever that he's doing right now. Hey, so you, you said something about free agents. You saying the worst free agent pickup or the best free agent pickup? Well, I was trying to say defensive line because because okay. it's because okay. it's a guy. It's a guy that we haven't talked about oh. who is up there in the bus category, but, but but we brought him in in free agency. He wasn't he wasn't a draft pick, but but know. this guy. Oh, you don't know who I'm talking about? I don't know. When we talk about free agent bus for the Atlanta Falcons, we shall not look any further than Ray Edwards. Horrible from the Minnesota Vikings. Did nothing for the Atlanta Falcons. Nothing. Not a zip zitch. Trash. Who was the guy we got from um, Baltimore? That was a linebacker. A linebacker from Baltimore. Yeah, we got him, and he ended up he ended up marrying um, Rudy from the Huxtables. Oh man, you talking about? Uh, I know you talking about because he played for the Raiders. He he went from them, then us, so, and then went to the Raiders. Okay, so but I ain't but, but so I kind of mixed him up. No, with Ray. I'm, I'm talking so, about Ray. So he Edwards. was such a bust. I barely remember him. Why, man, why do we sign Aaron. him? Aaron, can you please uh, look up Ray Edwards' time with the Atlanta Falcons? Yeah, t- tell me about this, man. Tell me about man, this. Man, well, Ray Edwards, we brought him in from the Minnesota Vikings. Okay. Defensive so wait, wait, end. What did he do for the this, Vikings? This, this, this was during, I want to say this was during the Matt Ryan era mm. uh, that we brought in Ray Edwards. And, I mean, he, he had a decent enough year that we felt like we should bring him in. The dude was a straight-up bust. <laughs> For the Atlanta Falcons. The dude did nothing <laughs> for did he the get a sack? Atlanta Falcons. <coughs> did he get nothing, a sack? man. Let, let me let me let me pull my phone while, while Aaron is looking that up. Man, you, you go ahead and take take the floor for a all second, right, man. All right, let man, me, that is hilarious. Up, I, I remember a lot of free agents, man. man, man I, 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 I would I'm, say I'm a free agent bus for me was five years. He played with the Falcons for five years? Five year contract. Oh, he got a five year contract. Probably played one year of that. But I I I think like some free agent bus for me was Joy Harrington. Um, him being the quarterback for us, that was that was terrible. Uh, Mar- Marcus Mariota was a bust. Um, so I, I can go. I can tell you some good some good free agent pickups that we did, like Tony Gonzalez by far. Oh, one hundred percent. Michael Burner Turner by far one of the best free agent pickups we've ever picked up. Um, Morton Anderson, I think that was a good pickup. Matt Bryant, that was a good pickup. So look, so look, let me let me read this. I, I pulled this up, man, and shout out, shout out to the Falcoholic. Shout out to the good people at the Falcoholic. Hey man, we would love to speak to you guys, man. Oh, yeah. The Water Boys so, show, we big time sure. Atlanta fans, man. Uh so in, in the article that I found about him, let's just show what he what he did. Okay, so over two seasons, oh, over two of the seasons with the Atlanta Falcons. So he joined the Falcons as a 26-year-old. He had 29 and a half sacks in that offseason. Mm-hmm. His first five years in the league. Mm-hmm. He was impressive, all right? Former fourth-round pick, the Falcons handed him a five-year, $30 million contract 
with $11 million guaranteed. Mm. Over the next two seasons, he played in 25 games, only sacked the quarterback three and a half times during his two years with the Atlanta Falcons. During his second year with the Falcons in 2012, Edwards went sackless before being cut in November. In the middle of the year? Due to what was fair, yes. Mike Smith and them got him up out of here in 2012. And remember, we were making a run that year. That's the year we made it to the NFC Championship game but, against the 49ers. They so so for them to just cut a defensive end. And so they, they said, due to what was fairly characterized as a poor attitude, Mike yeah. Smith asked the team to gather around him following a disappointing week 10. It was ignored him despite repeated requests. The Falcons cut him the next day, and it was never played another NFL snap. Dumbass. He made $11 million playing for the Falcons. Now, he did have a solid career, but for the Falcons, it was a bust. So when they cut him for the Falcons, he never played football again. Dumbass. Bad attitude. Mm -mm. Got yourself out the league, buddy. Mm -mm. Got, got his 10 mil and dip. Mm -mm. Ray Edwards, one of the worst. I agree. I, I, I told you, like, it was so bad. Over. I don't even. I remember slightly Ray Edwards, but I, I definitely don't so, remember his career. So I got to give it to the slickster. <laughs> he tried. Thomas Dimitrov, if y'all don't know who I'm talking about, slickback. The slickster, slickback, a, a, a pimp named slickback, a GM named slickback. Slickback Mountain. <laughs> oh Lord, this is this is taking a turn. Oh, no, I remember okay. Brokeback Mountain, Slickback Mountain. Yeah, we know. Yeah, I, I'm. I never seen the movie though. That must be crazy. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't know where you right, going. I don't go. know where right, you going back. with that. Right, we gonna keep it slick um, back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. The slickster. <laughs> what the hell? The slickster. I pulled a. I pulled a something. That I need to need to know what I'm talking about before I say something. I didn't know. <laughs> the slickster. But it, but anyway, so this is when the Falcons were good mm -hmm. in the Matt Ryan era. Yeah. And one one of the things that we were lacking. Was defensive end, defensive end who could put pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. So just imagine if he would have come in and been the player he's supposed to be. That and so so why why wasn't he that player? What was he? Because I don't know. Maybe he was that player because Jerry Allen had been in Minnesota. Oh yeah. During his years and so, but we had John Abraham. So why? So, why, so we had John Abraham the same we had Ray Edwards. Yes. Oh, I didn't ask John Abraham. I know John. So why? So why? You gotta have John on the show. Man, let, definitely. Need okay, to have cool, him on the show. cool. Let's do 100%. that. One hundred percent. Yeah, he definitely need to be. All on right, the show. I bring him on the show. One hundred percent. Let's yeah. get him on the next show. Yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm gonna reach out to him. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah, let's do it. But anyway, just think had just think if he had been the player that they brought him in to be, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe seventy percent of the player. Yeah. Because for this man to notch three and a half sacks over two years, yeah, that's just unacceptable. Yeah, I agree. Oh shit! Let's he, he we spend too much time on him, man. Fuck that nigga. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but look, man. Since since we are taking a blast from the past. All right, all right. Where we going? Let's let's move from the NFL. But we 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 gonna stay in the city of Atlanta. Okay. What are we talking all about? All right. We are gonna stay in the city of Atlanta. Let's talk about something that's dear to your heart that I know you want to speak on. I, I'm curious. What is it, man? Let's talk about. The Dominique That's my favorite versus player. Michael Jordan. Oh, the dunk contest? Dunk contest. Not, not the one that Dominique won. Talking about 88 in Chicago? Yes. Oh. I'm going to let you take the floor, man. All right. Paint the so, picture. So here we go, man. A um, couple years earlier, before the 88 dunk contest, it was a dunk contest in Indiana. It was Michael Jordan's rookie year. That's when Michael Jordan had the chain on and he did the little scissor dunk. Boom. That was like one of the prettiest dunks I've seen. So... Dominique won that dunk contest. He took home the trophy. All right, fast forward, 1988. Here it is. Chicago. Dominique Wilkins at, at his height, averaging about 28 points a game. Michael Jordan, up and coming dude. He, he, before he won any championships, he's averaging about 28. 20, they're, 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 they're going back and forth for the scoring title. Dominique won one year. They're having battles in Atlanta. Atlanta had a better team that year, so we was, we was beating up on Chicago. Atlanta, Atlanta won like 57 uh, games one of them, one of them years. Um, and went to the playoffs, lost to Boston um, game seven. Um, they they, they could have took them to the championship. But anyway, the dunk contest, man. And this is the first dunk contest where I'm going to get to it later where I've seen some bullshit go down and which shouldn't have went down. But anyway, 
Dominique has his repertoire of dunks that he has. He's already planned them out. You know, hey, this what won me the dunk contest that year. I'm going to mix in some of that with a little bit of new. And he gets to the finals, him and Jordan. All right? Keep in mind, if you look at Michael Jordan's dunks, go, go to YouTube, look at some of his dunks, and look at it in fast motion. It just looks, you know, bam. But if you take that dunk and you look at it in slow motion, that's when the poetry and motion comes in and it looks like he's gliding in the air. But if you just look at it fast motion, it don't really look like nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not taking anything away from Jordan because Jordan's one of the greatest dunkers and players ever to, to play. All right, so what pisses me off is during the dunk contest, before he gets to the finals, Jordan comes in and does like his signature Dr. J copycat jump from the free throw line. And in the first attempt, which he does, he, his foot is like two inches in front of the line where he, he crosses the line and he double clutches it. Boom. Free throw dunk. Beautiful. I ain't never seen nobody jump from the free throw line and double pump it and dunk it. So he got a 50, which he should have, you know, and, and showing how much to Dr. J. He did it prettier than what Dr. J did. Cool. All right. Dominique come in. He come in, does his double clutch, pulls the ball down to his crotch. Boom, backwards. Jordan comes in, does his does the same thing, but more of a finesse. Dominique's power is his. Jordan comes in, kind of glad his legs moving. Boom. All right, cool. Dominique comes in from the side, windmill, one-handed, tomahawk, boom, 50. The ball catches the rim, and he got a 50 on it, like, damn. So Jordan comes in, does his famous kiss the rim, 50. So, all right. Mm -hmm. So now it's coming to the final class, two dunks. Oh, one, 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 one dunk Dominique did, though. He did a 360 tomahawk. Ooh, it was nasty. Came in, 360. Boom, windmill. <laughs> not, not, yeah, windmill, tomahawk, whatever it was. Beautiful. Then, all right, here we go. And then you hear Craig say, Michigan control. <laughs> Michigan control. Uh, wait, he, he not about to do the free throw dunk again. Oh, he's about to do the Oh, we got this one, Trey. This is in the bag. We already know what Dominique going to yeah, do. Yeah, because he's about to repeat the dunk. <laughs> he, they not going to give him a 50 for that. They, they, they can't. They can't give him a 50 for that. He goes back. Clears it out. Oh, he's doing a free throw now. Maybe he's going to miss it. This time, he runs. If you go look, his foot is, is a whole foot after the free throw line. This time, it's even closer to the rim. Double clutches, dunk again. He lands up. Crowd goes wild. Because why? They're in Chicago. All right. Guess what the score is? Oh, they probably gave Jordan 100. A fifth, 100. They gave him 100. 100. They probably gave him 100. All right. So, so, all right. So, here go Dominique, man. Dominique pulls out his hardest dunk, the two-handed windmill. One of the hardest dunks to perform in any dunk. I tell you, two-handed jumping windmill is very hard to do. One hand's easy because you ain't got it, but to bring both hands on the ball is, is really hard to do and get, and get uh, elevations. Dominique comes in, nails it. The ball doesn't get caught on the rim. Power dunk, bam. I think he gets a 47, and he loses the dunk contest by, like, one, two points. And if you could just look at the face that Dominique has, he's like, these motherfuckers, they got me, man. It was a home-cooked victory, man. They had to. Home-cooked, man. So that, that was one of the most disappointing times as me being a Dominique and a Hawks fan to lose to Jordan in Chicago when it was robbed. And I can guarantee you, man, if you go back and look at it, he definitely was robbed, man. So, hey. Here's to uh, a blast from the past, man. Man, I rooted against Jordan because of it. From that, from oh, that yeah. point on. Oh yeah, like I've always from been, that point on, I was against Jordan. From that point on, me, and I've always been a Jordan hater because I thought Dominique was better. But now over the years, it's, of course, Jordan is better than um than, than Nick. But at the time, man, you couldn't you couldn't tell me that um, Jordan was better. Nick. Nick was better than Jordan. Nick was one of the best players in the league. But you know, time time settled it all. We, we know. Now, now, now you know. I, I respected Jordan. Always had. Yeah, I respect him. Too. I, I, I already know. I because I, I know I know what you said about him in the past. You know what I'm saying? Plus, you've gone crazy on this podcast talking about Jordan's still the face of the NBA. <laughs> 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 but but hey, but, but now 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 that I'm older. Uh, I understand why Jordan had to win that dunk contest. They were in Chicago. Oh, yeah. It, there is no way they were going to be able to walk out of that arena 
into that city, in, into Chicago, oh, and, and Michael Jordan not be the winner when the All Star game is there, their guy, the guy. No, nah, man, those judges, they'll probably still be looking for them right now. Yeah. Them, uh, those judges probably could tell you where Jimmy Hoffa was at. <laughs> If, if 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 they wouldn't have gave Jordan, if they would have made Jordan lose, yeah. I bet you they could tell you what Jimmy Hoffa is. And if you don't know who Jimmy Hoffa is, Google it and see what happened. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, bet you, part know. Yeah, for sure. I, I bet you they could tell yeah. you, man. But you know, man, speaking of Dominique, right? Speaking of Dominique, I want to bring up what I call a wild Atlanta sports move. So today, I already know where you're going. Today in Wild Atlanta Sports Move, we revisit the idiotic trade of Dominique Wilkins. Oh, no. In 1994, the Atlanta Hawks traded fan favorite, human highlight reel. The most the exciting wizard, play. The Wizard of Wind Wheel. Mr. Dunk on your mama, Dominique Wilkins. The human highlight film. For Danny Manning. And a bag of Lay's potato chips. Listen, not Eli Manning. Not Peyton Manning, not even Mrs. Manning. They traded for Danny Manning. Mm. Hey, marking the first time that an NBA franchise ever traded their leading scorer in the middle of a season. No time before that had the leading scorer of a team been traded in the middle of a season. They traded Dominique to the Clippers for Danny Manning. I guess they thought they were going to get younger. Neat contract was coming up. They make it to the playoffs. They get bounced out of the playoffs, I think, in the second round. And guess what's even worse? Danny Manning did not re-sign oh. with the Atlanta Hawks. So what do we get? Man, hey, uh, I, and, and I think they traded a first-round pick along with it. They so, Dominique so, Wilkins, so, a first round pick. So you lose Danny, you lose Danny Manning in free agency. You no longer have Dominique Wilkins, and you did not go further in the playoffs without Dominique than you thought you would. Hey Trey, I got a little insight on this because I used to date Dominique Wilkins' sister around that time. So I, I know I, I was real f close to the family. That was all a beef between Lenny Wilkins and Dominique Wilkins. I bet. Um that was a power move. That Lenny Wilkins pulled to show he had more power than Neek. I bet. And um, that's that's really what happened. Yeah, I'm, um, look, I'm, him, I'm looking up everything. Yeah, now. Lenny Wilkins and Dominique, they they really had um, some differences. And Lenny pulled out his, you know, because Lenny was a, you know, he, he's considered one of the all-time greats NBA uh, amb was. ambassador. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna say coach. I'm saying an ambassador to the NBA. He just was someone that had a lot of respect in the NBA. And it seems like the NBA sided with him. The Hawks and the NBA sided with him to get rid of Neek, but it was some. Wow. I think Neek and him really had some, some, some stuff that, that um, <laughs> you, you know, it was it was just some 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 major stuff. <laughs> I can go back to this though. <laughs> Where you remember Reggie Theus? I do remember <laughs> Reggie Theus. So Reggie, Reggie Theus used to have the females going crazy. Yeah, so so, I heard. so so him, Dominique and Mike Patello. <laughs> the reason Reggie Theus didn't last with Atlanta, I know this, <laughs> Reggie Theus. <laughs> was um was banging one of Mike Patello's side pieces <laughs> and they fell out over that. So that's why he left Atlanta. True story. <laughs> well, I, allegedly, allegedly, that's what happened. Jeez. <laughs> so I wanted to bring it up, but back to the neat thing. What did you What did you find out with, with looking? Yeah, at? no, I we just wanted to make sure that I was accurate about the first round pick. So yes, they traded Dominique and a first round pick for Danny Manning. So not only oh my not only God. did you lose a first round pick. You lose fan favorite Dominique Wilkins for Danny Manning. So, Dan, Danny Manning does not resign, and and till this day, still to this day, a lot of Hawks fans, a lot of older Hawks fans. Oh, they still not Hawks fans. They they? they do not support the team, and they hey, forever say the Hawks will be a train wreck because of. Let me ask you a question, and I'll be honest. Danny Manning and Dominique Wilkins. Now, Danny Manning was a great college player. I don't ever think that that the, the 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 success he had in college equaled out to the NBA. Who was better, Dominique Wilkins or Danny Manning? Man, Dominique, hands down, man, man you you're not gonna see Danny Manning on a listen. You're not even gonna see Danny Manning on a on a uh, top fifty college so, players, much less top fifty NBA. So, so how in the hell? 
do you do you trade Dominique Wilkins, a first round draft pick, for Danny Manning? Wild Atlanta sports. I mean, move. so like the Clippers had to be like, <laughs> you're giving us Dominique Wilkins, who's better than Danny, and a first round pick. So so look, if 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 we want to play devil's advocate, right? Dominique was older. Dominique was coming up for a new country. Uh huh. I think. I believe, this is just me believe because I wasn't there. <laughs> My belief is they thought they were going to get younger. Dominique was getting older. What you said about the coach and Dominique probably played a part in it, but I think they were trying to get younger. But Danny Manning, Danny Manning skipped on out of town and went to Phoenix to play with Charles Barkley. And and I think I think he uh got injured mm. uh right after that the next year. In, and, in Phoenix, and, 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 and he he got injured in college. He took like he shredded his knee, so he was already damaged. Cause that, but that's that goes to show you, man. Like that was something behind that. That, that I ain't gonna lie, my heart was broken when they traded Nick. The, the, the Hawks were number one in the East at the time they traded him. Jordan was off. Jordan was off playing Triple uh, A baseball. Wasn't even in the league. Oh wow! So you you had us. You have as much shot as anyone else. Jordan is out of the league. All right. All right. And these men that are in the front office make the decision to trade the fan favorite when you're number one in the East. I, I, you know what? That's, that's, that's one of the worst Atlanta sports moves ever, man. To this day, that still hurts. And, I, and, and the Hawks have not had an exciting player until now with Trey Young. Trae Young. And I, well, I mean, Josh Smith was exciting, but I, mean, I get Josh what you're saying. Josh Smith was exciting, I, I, but I, I, he, I get yeah, what you're saying. I, I get yeah. what you're saying. I get yeah, what you're saying. But that, yeah, that's yeah. a star a, player, a face of the Hawks, star Hulk. player, face of the Hawks. Yeah. yeah, Josh Smith was exciting. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, he, I, I was hope, I was pulling for him. God knows I was. Yeah, yeah, but hey, all right, the NBA Combine is going on, right? Okay. And um, and Bronny, the James, LeBron James' son, uh, he's he's having a decent combine, but something was discovered about Bronny and the Combine. All of the publications and all of the, the, the write-ups were saying he was 6'4". Comes to find out he's 6'1". So I want to do a segment of what were they thinking, Trey, when they put 6'4", and, and every, from college to high school to now. But now the NBA has discovered that he's 6'1". So what were they thinking when they did that, I, Trey? You know what, you know what, dog? I'm going to be honest with you. I, <laughs> I really don't have, I don't even think of anything funny I could try to do to that one because I think everybody's height gets gets. But that's ramped up. way down. I mean, they've been saying Trey Young 6'2. Trey ain't no 6'2. No six, six, Trey ain't no 6'2. Trey like 5'5. 5'5. Five, five. Five, five. Good, five, Lord. Five. <laughs> Good Lord. Jesus. He bought Muggsy Bowl size. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I, Look, I, uh, it genuinely threw me off when you said five five. I'm over here like five five. <laughs> you believe me? You believe me? <laughs> no, it just, it just, I don't think my brain caught up to the joke. <laughs> I was saying like five five. Jeez. You ain't know I was joking, man. I was like, hey, y'all, I was joking, man. I was. Like, I seen Trey. I'm five ten. Trey is taller like, than man, me. This man believes this man is five uh, nah, five. I, I met Trey in person. He's a cool guy. I'm five ten and a half. And he's taller than me. You know what, man? I'm gonna be honest. So, so normally, y'all, normally we come up with something funny on what were they thinking. The only reason I, I can't really think of one with this because this is just me personally, and and people can say I'm wrong. All you want, I I think it's a lot of dislike towards Bronny because of who his dad is. So I don't even want to put any any light on those folks okay, gotcha, who, gotcha, who, gotcha. who couldn't wait for him to be 6'1", or 6 foot, who couldn't wait for him to be less than 6'4", so they could say, see, LeBron kid ain't this. LeBron kid, look, I'm, I'm not, I, I am not, a, I am not a savant of basketball. I am not an expert of basketball. So I can't break down everything about Bronny's game, but I will tell you, there does seem to be a, a, a certain a certain amount of percentage of people who right. really want to see the man fail All right. because of who his dad All right. is. All right, let me ask you this. Speaking of that, this, this is going to tie in with that. <clears throat> who right now is struggling as an NBA franchise? Who would you say? Name, name an NBA franchise that's like, all right, they... 
Struggling, we mean struggling, like, playing, struggling all like the way they, around. They just like they ain't got it. They just like, all right, man, what 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 are we gonna do? Detroit Pistons. All right, Detroit. All right, you the Detroit Pistons GM. You're the Detroit Pistons GM. Do you draft Bronny in hopes of getting LeBron James? No. No. So do you think wherever Bronny goes, LeBron's going? If not this year, I think next year. But do I think? Okay, so. I think LeBron, if he stays in L.A., I think that he's going to at least speak to them and say, hey, I want to bring Brian in. I got him. I'm going to teach him. This is something that means something to me. If not, I think LeBron plays a year, wherever next year, and then the second year, because he's on the year to year now. Yeah. I, then I think he chooses to go wherever Brian is located. Okay. You know, I, I, I think that's the way it's going to play out. Uh, I, I wish the best for Bronny. Yeah, it's hard coming up under anyone's shadow, much less like such a towering, such a towering figure. Do you think he can make as, it? In the as, NBA? You think he's gonna be a starter? <clears throat> I, I ain't really seen him play, man. I can't say. I can't tell I, you that. That I, I do know. I mean, how big of an impact did he really make in college in his time? I know. I know the issue with the, the heart, heart. Yeah. Kind of set him back. They, from, they say he won the little, the, the little three point started. thing that he did. He, he did real good in the combine. He had a lot of threes. But like, I mean, did he set college on fire? No, no, he you didn't. You know, so I mean, it's 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 tough for him because you got to live up to your dad being LeBron. I mean, I mean, what what can you be to live up to LeBron James' name? That you you can't be anything short of. Just straight out amazing, mm -hmm. you know. Or people are gonna unfairly, you know, label you as you didn't succeed. You're not your dad when you're not put here to be your dad. You put here to be your own man. You put here to walk whatever God path that yeah. God has set for you. Uh, and I and I know you know for those who don't want to take a religious turn, I won't get too deep into it. But I truly believe we all have a God path, and that's the path that God put you here to be. And a lot of us run from that God path, and so I, I don't I don't know. Uh, what Brian will become, you know? Okay, well, we shall see, man. Man, I tell you, time flies when you're having fun, man. 100, 100%. 13th episode, don't know how to count up to there. <laughs> hey, man. But you knew it was 13. I knew it was 13, man. 1 3 Dan Marino, I knew that. Man, yeah. hey, look, tell me something. I know this don't have nothing to do yeah. with that. Man, how did you feel when you turned 13, when you became a teen? Because my son, my, uh, my, my oldest, is about to be a teenager this year. And and he's just I guess he thinks the world is gonna change. How, how did you feel Man, when you had I your I, how I, felt, like I had an aunt like she would always tease me. She's like, yeah, you don't have double digits yet, <laughs> you know. So when I turned ten, like I got double digits yet. So you're not a teenager yet. <laughs> so it's like when I came to that, I'm a teenager. So I was just excited to prove her wrong. So I, I guess I'm like I'm a teenager. It was like a big deal. I'm a teenager. So that sounded yeah. cool back then. So yeah. you know, I was just on that. You know, I'm a teenager. I'm. I done made it, you know. She yeah. can't talk about me now. I'm now. growing up now. Growing so. up now. What grade is that? Man, for a lot of people, that could happen in seventh grade. Seventh grade. Or, so what, or when they, uh, for some, uh, when they're in eighth grade. Yeah, so seventh, eighth grade. I was I was living in Denver, Colorado. Uh, so I remember those years. So, yeah, I had a good time in my teenage years. My 13th going a year. Man, I can't, I, 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 you know what? What I was thinking about at 13, I won't say here at the podcast, but uh, because I don't want to make it, it make me seem like a heathen. But but 13 was was a good birthday, man. 13 was a good birthday. I, I really felt I really felt grown. You know what I'm saying? I really felt like I was growing up. I'm not gonna put out there the things that were on my mind and what I was trying to accomplish at that particular time. I can only imagine. But but being 13, man, like I, I think about my son and he and so he's been when he was uh, 10. He would say, Dad, I'm almost a pre pre teen. So when he turned 11, he said, Yeah, Dad, I'm a, I'm, I'm a pre pre teen. Then when he turned 12, he said, Yeah, Dad, I'm a pre teen. Pre -teen. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the day he turns 13. Um, I really don't know what we're going to do for him, but I would love to make it really special yeah. uh, for him turn, turning 13. Oh, now, no. I'm not taking my son to the strip club. That, 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 I didn't say that. That at, was our. At, our... at 13, yeah. I'm not going to teach him to spend his we're money frivolously. I'm not going to teach him to be irresponsible I with his money. Man, you ain't lying. Notice how that's the main aspect of it that yeah. I'm harping on. Yeah, man. I'm not going to teach him to blow his money. Yep. Blow you know what I mean? BMF. I'm not going to teach him to blow his money, man. Man, well, hey, this has been great, man. What, 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 what you got to tell him before we leave? 
man, all I have to say is, man, we love you. We thank you. Uh, and, man, just keep sticking with us, man. The Water Boy Show, man, be rich. Trey Boy, you can just call me Trey. Hey, man, we are out. We out.